Taiwan could soon be bringing home the bacon. And by that, I'm talking about U.S. pork imports and beef imports, too. That's right. In today's Taiwan Insider, we're looking at a potential breakthrough in U.S.-Taiwan trade talks. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's check out the stories on our radar. Taiwan and the U.S. are set to start high-level trade talks that will focus on cooperation in 5G and semiconductors and restructuring supply chains. The American Institute in Taiwan, or AIT, made the announcement after President Tsai announced an easing of restrictions on U.S. pork and beef imports. In another sign of improving ties, AIT has also released newly declassified cables on its website related to arms sales and the United States' commitment to Taiwan. Visiting Czech Senate President Milos Vystrčil made headlines this week in a speech at Taiwan's legislature. He declared, quote, I am Taiwanese. Vystrčil is in Taiwan for a five-day visit at the head of an 89-member Czech delegation. Taiwan and the Czech Republic have signed multiple agreements. There is talk of starting direct flights between Taipei and Prague, and Taipei Zoo is even planning to give pangolins to its Prague counterpart. Taiwan's passport is getting a new makeover. The design features the word Taiwan more prominently and relegates the country's official name, the Republic of China, to small print circling the national emblem. The goal of the new design is to prevent confusion between Taiwanese and Chinese passports. The Taipei Zoo's new baby panda finally has a name. It's Yuanbao, which literally means Yuan's treasure or Yuan's baby. She is the second cub of Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan. The name was chosen through an internet vote, with the name Rou Rou, or Soft and Chubby, coming in second, and Mochi coming in third. This week, people around Taiwan, and even here at RTI, put out offerings for ghosts, who are said to be wandering the earth at this time of year. But if you think you know what a real feast looks like, chances are you haven't visited the central Taiwan town of Huwei during Ghost Month. Each year, residents of this Yunlin County town put together a 5,000-table banquet for ghostly visitors. The event attracts many thousands of living visitors, too. Capping off the extravaganza are ice sculptures and a fireworks show at night. And now for our words of the week. Andrew, want to guess my word? Yes, what do you have? Police. Precinct? What do you think? <laughs> Protest. You've been a bad boy this week. I have. <laughs> promise. I promise I have. Is it promising? Okay, I would say U.S. Taiwan trade talks look very promising from recent events, but people have some concerns about U.S. pork, and we'll be talking about that in today's show. Excellent. Are you ready for my word? Yes. All right. Remember? Re <laughs> Renaissance. 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 What are you thinking of? Well, this Music, past week we've culture? seen we've seen a lot of new things happening, uh, especially in U.S. Taiwan ties. We've also seen a new passport cover here in Taiwan. That's right. And a little bit later on in our show, I'm going to be talking about the Taipei Brewery, which is the oldest brewery in Taiwan, which is also looking for a renaissance of its own. All right, let's put these on the shelf. Last Friday, President Tsai announced that Taiwan is relaxing restrictions on U.S. beef and pork imports. Now, this is a big deal because the ban has been a major sticking point in U.S.-Taiwan trade talks. It's also been a huge issue in domestic politics. Let's have a look. Debates over Taiwan's policy on imported meat have always been rooted in politics. Many say they don't want Lena's enhancing additives in their pork, and others say they worry about mad cow disease. But then, there are also Taiwan's trade ties with the U.S. to consider. Though food safety concerns are a priority, ruling and opposition parties have also fought endlessly about imports of U.S. beef and pork over successive administrations. Might doing so keep Taiwan-U.S. relations stable or even boost Taiwan's trade advantages? During his time in office, former President Chen Shui-bian of the GPP gradually allowed conditional beef imports from the U.S., ending a complete ban caused by Macau disease. This drew heavy criticism from the opposition KMT. But just a few years later, after the KMT won the presidential office, it decided to import more U.S. beef. The GPP made sure to remind voters of this in later campaign ads. Then President Ma ying of the KMT promised that food safety would come first and that cattle innards would still be banned. But Tsai Ing-wen, then DPP chairwoman, vowed with her party to support those protesting the relaxed policies. The Ma administration was slammed for kowtowing to the U.S. 
A few years on, it's Thai and the DPP relaxing policies and the KMT on the offensive. Former Premier William Lai has acknowledged this bipartisan flip-flopping. When the DPP is in power, the opposition is against the policy. When it's the KMT's turn, the DPP opposes it. Is it impossible to find the balance between food safety, better trade deals and better diplomatic ties? So what's the latest decision about U.S. meat? Well, beginning January, Taiwan is going to allow beef from cattle over 30 months old and pork with ractopamine. So what is ractopamine and is pork with ractopamine in it safe to eat? That's the subject of today's Taiwan Explained. Ractopamine, it's not medicine for humans, it's a feed additive for pigs. Now, what is it and why is it so controversial? Well, today to tell us all about it is Catherine Wei. Hey, Catherine. Hi. So, Catherine, can you start off by telling us what exactly is this drug that so many people here in Taiwan are concerned about? Yes, so ractopamine is actually a feed additive given to pigs just weeks before they're slaughtered. It creates leaner meat and helps pigs grow faster with less feed. But the U.S.-based Center for Food Safety says it's been more harmful to American pigs than any other animal drug. There are potential human health concerns as well, but related studies have been limited. And there already is an international standard for rectopamine, right? Yes, that was decided by an international body governing food standards in 2012. The standard is up to 10 micrograms per kilogram of rectopamine in beef and pork, 40 micrograms in livers, and 90 micrograms in kidneys. But the decision was made by a 69 to 67 vote, which means there is not a real scientific consensus on the issue. The international community is also divided on rectopamine. 160 countries, including the European Union, China, and Russia have banned or restricted products with rectopamine. However, there are 27 countries that say rectopamine is safe and legal, including the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. What about Taiwan? Taiwan's health minister Chen Shizhong, who has headed coronavirus briefings, has spoken about this. He cited a Council of Agriculture Risk Assessment in 2019 that says meat from animals fed rectopamine is safe for human consumption. So now, Catherine, I understand that innards have a much higher concentration of ractopamine. Now, this isn't a problem in places like the U.S. where a lot of people don't really eat innards. But here in Taiwan, we do eat innards. Is that a concern? We do, but the minister is saying since we don't like frozen innards, they're not going to import it anyways. Okay, so the ones that would be imported would be frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the pork industry is not happy about the news. How do you think it's going to affect them? Because the industry is huge here. We'll have to see about that. But when we first started importing pork, still over 90% of Taiwanese people bought local pork. So I think they still prefer and trust Taiwanese pork. Great, mm. it's very loyal to uh, local farmers, mm. huh? Absolutely, and I think there's probably a difference in flavors too. Maybe people are used to I it, I think right? so, yeah. yeah. Now, when we buy the pork at a store or let's say we eat it at a restaurant, will we be able to know where the pork came from? Yes, so the same day the policy was announced, the government also said that meat packages coming into Taiwan have to be labeled with their country of origin. And that also goes for night market stalls and restaurants. Okay. So when we know where all our meat is coming from Absolutely. in the future, that's great. Yeah, it is great. All right, so thanks, Catherine. Thank and you. that is Taiwan Explained for the week. Taiwan's oldest brewery. That is the subject of today's brain game. And today's brain game is a Taiwan by number, which means I'll be asking both of you for numbers. Our contestants today are Nally So and Leslie Liao. Are you guys ready? Ready as ever. Just don't <laughs> breathalyze me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start off with the first one. Now, the Taipei Brewery is the oldest brewery in all of Taiwan. It was founded during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. What year was it founded? 1898. 1898 from Natalie. Japanese occupation, 1922. 1922. Interesting guess there, Leslie. <laughs> let's have a look at the answer. Oh, wow. 19, oh, so 19. close. I think that was way too early. <laughs> this close. I have to tell very you, good. though, the very first beer that was made there was called Takasago Beer. And that was actually made starting in 1922. Maybe that's Very what I was thinking good. about. <laughs> now, that was the predecessor to another beer that I think both of you are probably very familiar with. That's Taiwan beer. Mm -hmm. The question is, what year did they start brewing Taiwan beer? 
Oh dear. 1930? 1930 for Natalie. 1953. Okay, all right, let's have a look at the answer. 1946. Oh, oh, wow. Now that's after the Japanese left oh, at the end after of the Japanese World War left. II. And that's when the you know, nationalists had already come here to Taiwan. Right. So they changed the name from Takasago to Taiwan. I get it. Makes I'll take sense, it. right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, one thing that makes Taiwan beer unique is that they use rice in the process of making the beer. It gives it a very unique flavor. Um, and one of the tests that they used to give new employees or prospective employees was they had to carry a bag of rice for 30 meters, you know, forward and back. How heavy was that bag of rice? 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms, okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm that's gonna too say heavy. 22 kilograms, 50 pounds. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Oh, 30 good. kilograms, and you can see there's a guy there who's actually doing the test. He looks like he's doing it with relative ease. He's it, just strolling. It looks like he's running maybe even. Yeah. 30 kilograms, not too bad. Not too bad. Well, Yeah, 50 is a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 100 pounds, that's a lot. <laughs> These days you don't have to carry the bag of rice, so yeah. you just take a written test. Um, so let's move on to the next one here. Uh, how many weeks does it take to make Taiwan beer? Oh. <laughs> one week? <laughs> a week, one okay. Week. Three? Three weeks? Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Six oh, weeks. Oh, wow, that oh. long. That's right, and you can see a brand new equipment <laughs> there on the beer. left. Um, you can see the older antiques on the right. They still have some beautiful old brewing equipment that came from Germany. Uh, in fact, there really? are four of those pieces of equipment in one set. There are only less than 10 sets of those brewing equipment left in the world oh, today. Oh, wow. It's pretty impressive, That's right? That's cool. Piece of history. Now, right now, there is a petition to turn Taipei Brewery into a beer culture park right in the center of Taipei. That's cool. Would you go? Yeah. Absolutely, right? I'd love yeah. to go. Now, earlier this week, uh, Ellen Chu, my co-host from Feast Meets West, the two of us, we went on a tour to Taipei Brewery to see it. And one of the things that we did when we were there was we had a little bit of a beer taste test. Mm. And uh, I want to show you a clip of our taste test. We pick it up at the end when we sample the strongest beer of the whole bunch. Have a look. <laughs> Alright, so this one is what? This is uh It's basically it gives you the big woozies. If you look at all these beers, we've had how many? One, two, three, four, five. We've tried six beers and we're going on to the seventh beer in maybe ten minutes. Okay. So this last one is called Dong Bao Xi Wai. So falling to the east and like leaning to it's, the west. It's just basically the oozy feeling. No game. Uh, six. Ooh, look, look how dark up. that is. Oh, shit. So this is 6.5% alcohol. This is the strongest beer of all of the beers you try. Just by smelling, I think I'm drunk. Look at all these beers. American IPA, Irish Red Ale, Osmanthus Herb Baby, Taipei Blonde, 18 Days, Spice beer. Spice beer. Cheers. Cheers. So it's it's the most bitter and yes. it has the highest level of alcohol. Definitely. And Ellen Chu has been pouring her beer into my cup for everyone. Right. He's getting it for everyone. So I was supposed to, you know, take my scooter back to work today, but I don't think that's going to happen. At least someone has to be, you know, sober, right? Later on. Designated driver. Yeah. Taking one for the team, Ellen That's too. right. Relax. We're not doing any recording. Alright, let's <laughs> finish all of them. Okay. <laughs> so, how does this feel compared to the American IPA? It's more bitter, definitely. It has a soy sauce taste to it. This one's, I think it's sweeter. No, it doesn't have sweet sauce. So this one has more alcohol in it. So this has a, a bitterness of 20 and this has a bitterness of 28. Mm. <laughs> and then bitter <laughs> Well you I mean you, you prefer the Osmanthus one, right? Mm -hmm. This is your favorite? Right. And you liked did you like this one? I like the 18, actually. You like the 18 as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if I were to choose 
some beers. <laughs> I would choose probably also 18 days and uh, the IPA. You like this one? No, oh, this, one. this, this is the IPA. <laughs> oh, someone's woozy. Oh, Andrew Ellen. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about Russian. Now, by no means am I an expert in anything Russian at all. I only know that Dasvidaniya means goodbye, Da means yes, the Russian leader's name is Vladimir Putin, and the capital city is Moscow. But did you know that Radio Taiwan International, which is the radio station that produces Taiwan Insider, I feel like that's something you all should already know, has 13 different language services. There's Mandarin, Taiwanese, Hakka, Cantonese, English, Japanese, Indonesian, Thai, Vietnamese, Spanish, German, French, Korean, and as you can probably guess, Russian. But before we jump in, I've got a question for you. Are you hopelessly bored? Are you all Netflixed out? Are you under lockdown with no foreseeable end in sight and every morning you wake up staring into a void of nothingness, which is also a perfect metaphor for the amount of things you have to do each day? If so, consider doing the museum challenge. In late May, the Getty Museum in Los Angeles challenged people to recreate a work of art with objects and people in your home. People reacted with all kinds of responses, ranging from abstract minimalistic representations of famous artworks to full-blown reenactments complete with full makeup and wardrobe. At this point, you're thinking, how did we get from Russian to fine art? I know and you know that I have the attention span of a lima bean, but each week I keep it together just enough to keep hashtag coherent. A few weeks ago, the RTI Russian service introduced their Gu Gong at Home Challenge. Chinese lesson time, you guys. Gu Gong is the Chinese name of Taiwan's National Palace Museum. It's home to 700,000 ancient Chinese artifacts, making it one of the largest collections in the world. So what does the Gu Gong at Home Challenge entail? Don't take it from me. Take it from the Russian service. Members from RTI's Russian service took turns dressing up and recreating art found in the National Palace Museum to show what the challenge is all about. Here they recreated a statue of a Tang woman. Here is a recreation of a painting from the Qing Dynasty. And here is a recreation of another Qing Dynasty painting. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say I walked into a time machine and traveled right back to ancient China. Yes, you can participate, and here are the rules. One. Take inspiration from any piece of art at the National Palace Museum. You can find a link to the museum's art database in the show notes below. 2. Recreate that piece and take a picture. 3. Send the picture to russ at rti.org.tw. Be sure to include Gu Gong at home in the subject line of your email. Don't forget a picture of the original artwork you've decided to imitate. 4. You can send several photos, but it must be of the same artwork. 5. Creativity and humor are welcome. Photoshop is not. Winners will receive a prize from the Russian service, which is apparently something from the National Palace Museum. Winners will also have their photos showcased on the Russian service's Facebook page. The deadline is September 20th, and winners will be announced on September 27th. What are you guys doing? Get to imitating, get to photographing. Send your pictures to RTI's Russian service. And when you do, you tell them Leslie sent you. Welcome to this week's Taiwan News Quiz, where I will be testing Natalie and Andrew on their knowledge of the news. Natalie and Andrew, are you guys ready? I think so. I guess so. It's a little hard this week. No, I will no, admit. no, no more weapons, okay. Lastly. <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock. I'm not sure if there are any weapons. 60 seconds on the clock. Here we go. All right, guys, the Czech Senate president is currently in Taiwan on a five-day trip. He gave a speech at the legislature where he got a 20-second applause for saying a phrase in Mandarin. What did he say? I am Taiwanese. I am Taiwanese. I am Taiwanese. Taiwan donated five of these to the Czech Republic. Pangolins. Ambulances. Oh, actually, not uh, pangolins. Face Fire mask trucks. production chains. Oh. <laughs> Taiwan's <laughs> Ministry of Foreign Affairs unveiled a new design for what earlier this Passport. week? Passport. That's right. A government official who has skyrocketed in popularity over the past few months did a photo shoot with a magazine showing a more fashionable side. Who is that Tenshi man? Tenshi Zong. Tenshi Zong. Tenshi Zong. Correct. Which magazine did the shoot? GQ. GQ, and he looks very fashionable. <laughs> Taiwan's Aerospace Industrial Development Corporation established a maintenance center for what kind of aircraft last week? 
F-16s. F-16, oh, right. correct. See, I almost got you there. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier this week, harrowing footage of a three-year-old girl being swept up into the air by a kite hit Taiwan social media. How long was the girl airborne for? Like Three 30 minutes? Seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. And final, se final question, you guys. Taiwan signed a deal with which U.S. state to recognize each other's driver's licenses? Vermont. Vermont, Vermont. <laughs> correct. I like how you guys ended in tandem. That was such good chemistry. Wow. Do you guys have a driver's license? I do. I do. But I had to get mine here California. because they didn't take Missouri ones. Oh, they didn't take yeah. Missouri one. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got the California one. Oh, they they take them here. Yeah. Was, yeah. I, they don't take Missouri here. I don't know if they do anymore. I think they might take it now. But it's only some states. At the time, it was only Illinois They can tell you're not a good driver, Andrew. No. Hey! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Vermont is the 34th state to enter that agreement with Taiwan. So, like, the odds are in your favor right now, Andrew. <laughs> it's too late. I got it already. You got it already? <laughs> All right. There we go. Anyway, that was this week's Taiwan News Quiz. Well, today we've been talking about U.S. beef and pork imports. So our final question today is, where's the beef, Leslie? Hopefully in my stomach. I do love some <laughs> good steak. It's all now, over Taiwan now. That's Soon. right. It's more and, to come to. And for me, I would say, uh, if we're being nice to the uh, heifers and the steers, it's still on the animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us for today's Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, we would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.